Next I'm doing this cool arrangement of Danny Boy, and uh, there are just a couple tricky phrases in it. Otherwise it's uh, range and endurance stuff, which um, I just kind of practice all the time. Uh, here's a good exercise, I think I've done it before in a, a tutorial video, but you keep your mouthpiece on your lips, and you only breathe through your, your nose or the side of your mouth, but you gotta keep your lips on the horn. So that's where I tap out uh, this time, and uh, it's a really fun exercise because you can work on your range without having to go to the top of your range. Uh, so again, you got to keep your lips on the mouthpiece and set it up. So if you want, you can start lower and you'll bring that top part down again. So it was just a high B flat and that was as far as I could go because my lips were set on the octave below. Does that make sense? You keep your lips set on uh, the first note you play and then you just go up the scale, um, breathing through your nose, and get up there. Now, in the book that I took this from, uh, it says, now, rest for a second, buzz out, and then start where you left off. So now you're starting on that high B flat with your lips set there, doing the same thing going up. I'll do it for a little bit. So that's probably where I left off. And the book says just keep going until there's absolutely no sound coming out. Um, you should not do this more than once a day, I would say. Um, it, it really kills the muscles, and it's, it's, like, a, it's like a muscle building thing, a strength training thing. Um, but that's the exercise I do to get the endurance up and the, the range. Uh, so this piece, Danny Boy, has a lot of that. I have a couple things that I'd like to do if I'm feeling it on stage. Um, but here's, here's a passage. It goes... And so it's uh, two triplets, and then it's technically a sextuplet, and then um, eight thirty-second notes, but da-ba-da-da-ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da is the rhythm. not the issue, I can play that. Uh, but now it goes up to a high E flat in the music. Again, that's not really the issue, I can do that too. I would like to go up to a G above that, uh, you're the only people that will probably ever know that because I doubt it will happen, but I would really like to. Um, I've been playing all day so I don't know if I can do it for you guys now, but... So this is something that I want to work on uh, so I'm not afraid of it. And I, I know what it feels like when I feel like I'm going to hit it and I know what it feels like when I'm not. So I have a whole bunch of options if I'm not feeling it. If I'm not even feeling the E flat, I can go to the G below um, if, uh, or the E flat below that or the G below that. There are so many options. Uh, so I just have to know myself and know my own lips and feeling uh, to know what it feels like when I'm gonna hit it and when I shouldn't. Uh, so the audience never has to know, they just hear this gorgeous sound and they don't know that I copped out. So I'll try it one more time and try to really go for it and maybe it'll sound uh, really bad. <laughs> Okay.
Okay. So that is something I would love to do. Uh, once I get off of that, it's really tough to nail a note. I didn't nail it, let's be honest, but uh, it's tough to nail the high point of a piece and not relax. But you have to not relax. Most people will go, I nailed it, and totally screw up the next few notes because they've celebrated too early. Don't do that. Okay, uh, I, there aren't too many tricky spots in this. It's just these uh, very diatonic runs. Diatonic means uh, just scale-wise. Um, so this is the key of E-flat. It's just an E-flat scale going all over the place. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with this, so I'm going to move on.